there's something different about this family. They have harnessed something so powerful that they are able to alter the world around them. The story is based around the Selig family, who are a family of supernatural artists, musicians, and inventors. My initial theories were correct. Sound holds everything together, all of this. Choose the right frequency and you can unlock anything you want. One of the essential reasons for the house in that exhibit is to ease people into the bizarre world we've created. You want somebody to walk into the house and feel as though the family had just left. There's still steam coming out of the kettle, you know what I mean? Like they were just there. Something inside the house happened that broke time and space. They disappeared from this reality. Everything that went into the build of the house was a challenge in the same way that everything that went into the build of the entire exhibit was a challenge. We never had enough time and we never had enough money, but we had some incredibly creative people. There was probably 30 people that helped in there as well as volunteers. Do you want to carry it? Yeah, let's carry it. So just wait. Watch out for that tree. Look at it. All right. We basically had the contractors build a pretty blank facade and we did a Mr. Potato Head thing where we kind of just made these decorative elements and plugged them onto that facade. These are the shingles for the roof. The design aesthetic for the exterior was done as an homage to George R. R. Martin, who was our great benefactor. And so I was like, I'm gonna do a dragony motif. On the first floor, the siding is very typical horizontal siding which I envisioned as the belly of the dragon. And then the second floor has scales, which are like the scales of the dragon. A lot of thought went into the flow of how you flow into the story of this space. You come into the living room, everything to this point is very normal. Once you get to the dining room, you really get a sense like, okay, something's not quite right. This is where the family ended up breaking their universe. So there's a lot of subtle things that let you know that something huge happened here. We have the ripples on the ceiling. You have that going off. Like if you get too close to the table, everything rumbles. The chandeliers melted. Almost everyone on the tech team pitched in on the, the dining room table because it was one of the more complicated things that we were doing. There's a point in the center of the table that is essentially the threshold for the haptics within it, which are what gives it that vibrating effect as though the entire house is shaking. If we'd like to cut the speed by half, yeah, like see what like, cool too, like, pulsing like it. if it's more, yeah. you know? That has more of like an animalistic, yeah, yeah. organic feel if it's like Less kind on of and off. Of demonic. The thing that I uh, like about this room the most is the wallpaper here. Something that a lot of guests tell me that they miss when they come through. It has the whole thing literally like written on the walls. You have the town of Mendocino, California right here. And then you have this dining room table with a portal and a little boy floating over the table, like symbolizing the night that the family created everything that you're seeing inside of the exhibition. I didn't have money to decorate the house, really. If we could find it free on Craigslist, all right, it's going in the house. And that dictated so much of the design. The couch that's in there, it was like rotting by the side of the road. And we found someone to reupholster it for us for basically nothing. When people walk into this space, one of the most delightful things that happens to our guests initially is the weird experience of going into someone's home and peeking through their drawers and stuff. It's strange and it's also kind of wonderful and everybody kind of wants to do it anyway. And there's countless things indicative of a life having happened in there. Every one of the spaces is there to describe the characters that live in them and ways to get to know that character. We're in the living room right now, which uh, belongs to that guy over there in the corner. And that's the character I worked on. His name's uh, Lucius Selig, and he's a sort of failed 
self-help cult guru. Hello, I'm Lucius Selig, best-selling author of The Power of Positive Mechanics, a roadmap to your spirit home. Everything you see here from like his notes on his desk uh, and um, his uh, day planner here, um, all relate back to his character. As you're like flipping through this stuff, you get a sense of uh, you know who this guy is. Um, putting a lot on the audience to read it, but like with that idea of like rewarding somebody who's willing to dig into it. We didn't want to have an experience where we were holding people's hands and just kind of like guiding them along like plot point by plot point, encouraging people to come back and you know try again and also to like have a discussion among themselves as to like what they thought the story was. We had some really talented and dedicated storytellers. So we did create the story by committee. We all ended up taking one or more of the characters and developing them. I brought in a list of about 50 questions that we could ask our characters that we were writing. Anything from what is your most recent memory of being angered to what is an object that you've lost? Not typical narrative questions in the larger arc of a story, but things that would help us get a little bit closer to who these people were in their private moments. We never held the story too close. We let it evolve and we let it change into becoming what it needed to become to support the exhibit. The justification for the exhibit outside of the house was the physical realization of these people that lived inside of it. The family, they are so creatively powerful that their abilities actually break time and space, which creates the exhibition behind the house. And that exhibition is a manifestation of the family's thoughts and memories and dreams. The process was this, we would discover a space that an artist was gonna make and then reverse engineer it back into our story and find a rationale for every one of those things. We would take every new space that an artist was working on and would assign it to the psyche of a character. <laughs> it's really like, okay, now this has changed our idea of this character. In every single room, you'll see evidence of how the exhibit relates to the house. The kids' room in particular has a number of things that are repeated throughout the exhibit. They have the miniature model of the mastodon that Nikolai made for them. If you look at the fish tank in the living room, which relates to the Gloquarium space. Cool, so this is my uh, favorite passage in the house. Embedded into this house are these secret passageways, these like portals that lead to other dimensions, wormholes that lead to other dimensions. So one good example is the refrigerator. So you open the fridge, and you got this really awesome sort of tunnel or passageway that leads into another world. Portals Bermuda. With a Lucius character, we ended up attaching it to Portals Bermuda because Emily and Benji were talking to me about it, like, oh, we're building this place called Portals Bermuda. It's going to be a interdimensional travel resort. Only the, the hitch is that stuff there keeps breaking. And I'm like, that's awesome. With Portals Bermuda, Benji and I knew we wanted to have a holographic concierge who greets you. And then narrative really came in and tied it all together with Lucius. And so it came to be that Lucius is the person who came up with the idea of Portals Bermuda because he is all about taking people to their spirit homes. What if everyone could project with me and visit spirit homes from across the galaxy? I call this place Portals Bermuda. The story can continually be alive and grow. It's an ongoing process, which I think is perfect. And every time we add a new element to the exhibit or upgrade the exhibit, we find a way to create some small thing in the house that relates to that thing. And so in that way, the decor of the house is constantly evolving. And it's become something bigger than what we could have ever created ourselves.